no, I'm not. Oh, another play trigger in the bakery. Much more for you. And we're doing that by taking advantage of the power of apps with a new feature we call Shortcuts. Now, with Shortcuts, any app can expose quick actions to Siri. Let's look at some examples. Now, say you have the Tile app because you're always losing your keys. Well, the Tile app can expose the option to add a shortcut to Siri. You can assign your own phrase, such as, I lost my keys, would be a good shortcut. And when you then say it, it activates, you write steps across multiple applications, and we're doing it with a new Shortcuts app. So with the Shortcuts app, you could do something like create a, a shortcut for surf time, and it could go get you the surf report, look up the current weather, get you the ETA to the beach, and even create a reminder for you to put on sunscreen when you get there. Now, it's all done with simple drag and drop steps in the Shortcuts editor right here. It's really easy. Now, to show you how shortcuts can streamline your day, I'd like to invite one of our leaders from our Siri Shortcuts project, Kim Beverett, to the stage to give you a live demo. Kim. I am so stoked to show you Siri Shortcuts. To do that, I'm going to walk you through my day. So imagine it's the morning, I'm headed to work, and I pick up my phone, and I see this suggestion from Phil's Coffee. Siri has learned that I do this most mornings, so now I can just tap on the suggestion, and I see all the details I need to confirm my perfect mint mojito right here on the lock screen without even going into the app. So let's get caffeinated, and I'm done. Fast forward a little bit, and I'm sitting at my desk at my office, and I need to know when my next meeting is. I'll go to the up next widget, and it looks like I am running a little late for a rather important meeting, so I should probably let someone know. And it looks like Shortcuts is a few steps ahead of me. I could call into the meeting, or I could let the organizer know that I'm running late. I should probably tell Ari what's up. That looks like just what I want to say. Sorry, Ari. Let's send it. Perfect. I also want to sh show you how you can add a shortcut to Siri. So let's take a look at Kayak. I keep all of my travel details in Kayak. Most important is my post-WWDC relaxation trip to Los Angeles. You can see I've got my flight, my hotel, all the details, everything I need. But what I really want is to be able to use this and get to this information with my voice while I'm on the go. So let's head back. And I can just tap Add to Siri, record my custom phrase, travel plans and I am done. So now, when I land at the airport, and I'm about to get in the cab, and I could really use that hotel address, I can just say, travel plans. Kayak says, your hotel is at 929 South Broadway. You can check in after 3 p.m. Isn't that cool? It's pretty cool. So I would love to be on that vacation, but I should, I don't know, probably finish this demo. So let's head back to work, and I can show you how the Shortcuts app can help me with my commute home. We start in the gallery, where there's hundreds of pre-made shortcuts that you can download, or we can hop over to the library, and I've got a bunch of shortcuts here, but I want to show you my heading home shortcut. You can see that it's just really a series of steps. It grabs my location and my travel time, and it sends my ETA to my roommate. It sets my home kit thermostat to 70 degrees, and it turns on my fan. And last, it gets directions home with Apple Maps with the best route to avoid traffic. Now, this is already pretty cool, but I happen to be an NPR news junkie, so I should probably just add that to my shortcut to save me some trouble on the ride home. Let's tap Search. And there's a bunch I can add here, but I can just tap Series Suggestions. And there it is, Play KQED Radio. We'll drag this in, drop it, and we're set. I've already added this shortcut to Siri with the custom phrase heading home. So now, 
Whenever I leave work, I can just say, heading home. You will get there in one hour. I sent a message to Cheryl. Your thermostat is set to 70 degrees and I turned on the fan, playing KQED radio. Right? That's Siri Shortcuts in iOS 12. Thank you so much. Siri Shortcuts. It works on iPhone and iPad, and of course, you can run your shortcuts from your HomePod and your Apple Watch. That's your quick update on Siri. Next, let's talk about apps. And to tell you about the latest, I'm going to hand it off to Susan. Susan! Hello! Thanks, Craig, and it is so great to be here. I'm excited to tell you about some great updates in some of our most popular apps, starting with one of my favorites, News. So <clears throat> News is a personalized feed where you can see all the stories you want to read pulled together from trusted sources. And our top stories are handpicked by the Apple News editorial team uh, to, to make a, a great collection of curated content. With our new Browse tab, you can discover new channels and topics, and we've made it even easier to dump, jump to your favorites, because that's why they're your favorites, right? News shines on the iPad. We've added a new sidebar, and it's a great way to navigate. It makes it easy, and I think fun, to dig into the areas you're most interested in. So that's news. Now, we've completely rebuilt the Stocks app, and it's got a beautiful new design. Of course, you can still see the stock prices and the changes at a glance, but we've added spark lines, those little charts, that show the stock performance throughout the day. And that's cool, but are you ready? We are so excited to announce we're bringing Apple News to Stocks. I'm really excited about that. And the top stories in stocks features business news, right? Curated by the Apple News editors. It's pretty terrific. You can tap on any stock to get a more detailed view. So you can see an interactive chart that now includes after hours pricing. And you see relevant headlines from Apple News curated by our Apple News editors. So it looks great. And if you tap on one of those headlines, you'll see the full article without leaving the app. And of course, it's formatted to look gorgeous on the iPhone. Now, with iOS 12, we're bringing stocks to iPad. It's pretty great, and we take advantage of the larger display so you can keep your eye on your stocks on the left while you browse through your financial news. It's a pretty great experience. Next up, voice memos. We've also completely rebuilt voice memos to make it even easier to use. And we're bringing voice memos to the iPad for the first time. <laughs> Importantly, we've also added iCloud support so your recordings stay in sync across all your devices. We think iPad users are just gonna love this. And we think that iBooks is the best way to discover and experience eBooks as well as audiobooks. And with iOS 12, we're inducing an all new design. And we think the update is so great, we're calling it Apple Books, a new name. Very dramatic. We drop the eye. Apple Books has some great new features. For example, reading now with a preview that makes it really easy for you to pick up reading right where you left off. And there's so much more, including a stunning new store that makes browsing through your eBooks and audiobooks better than ever. We love these updates and we think you will too, but we also have a smart and safe way to use your apps in the car. I think you know I'm talking about CarPlay. 
CarPlay already supports third-party audio and voice messaging, uh, you know, voice calling and messaging apps. You probably know that. But what you might not know is with iOS 12, CarPlay will also support third-party navigation apps. So now you have even more choices when you use CarPlay. That is a really quick look at some of our app dates. And Craig, back to you. Thank you, Susan. Well, now I'd like to take a moment to talk about something that's on a lot of people's minds lately. You know, iPhone and iPad are some of the most powerful tools ever created for learning, exploring, and keeping in touch. But some apps demand more of our attention than we might even realize. They beg us to use our phone when we really should be occupying ourselves with something else. They send us flurries of notifications, trying to draw us in for fear of missing out. And some of us, it's become such a habit that you know we might not even recognize just how distracted we become. We've thought deeply about this, and today we're announcing a comprehensive set of built-in features to help you limit distraction, focus, and understand how you're spending your time, and balance the many things that are important to you. Now, it starts with do not disturb. There, there are times of the day, or times when you just don't want to be disturbed, and one of those, of course, is at night. Sometimes you wake up in the middle of the night and you look at your phone, maybe just to check the time, and you're confronted with something like this. <laughs> barrage of notifications that spin you up and keep you from falling back asleep. And so we're introducing Do Not Disturb During Bedtime, where all you'll see is this, nothing to get you spun up. And in the morning, yeah. In the morning when you wake up, you're gently eased into your day. You can tap when you want to start confronting those notifications. <laughs> now, we've all found ourselves in situations like this. <laughs> now, rest assured, he stuck the landing on this one. Uh, but now, Do Not Disturb can help. And we've made it easier than ever to use Do Not Disturb because now we have a great new mode where when you press in to Do Not Disturb and Control Center, you can set an ending time for Do Not Disturb for when you leave a particular location or when an event ends on your calendar. So I think we're all going to be using Do Not Disturb a bunch more. more. Now, next I want to talk about notifications. Now, notifications help keep us informed and connected to important things that happen throughout the day. And we'd, we'd like to give you more control over how many notifications you receive. And so we're enabling what we call instant tuning for notifications right from the lock screen. You can press in to a notification, and from there you can decide to send future notifications from that app directly to Notification Center, bypassing your lock screen, or turn them off altogether. And Siri will even help by suggesting that you turn off notifications for apps that you're no longer using. Now, we also wanted to give you help managing large numbers of notifications. So I'm thrilled to announce that we're bringing to iOS support for grouped notifications. <laughs> notifications are grouped not just by app, but also by topic and thread. It gives you a great overview of the notifications you've received. You can tap in and look at a particular group, but of course, just as important, with a single swipe, you can triage a whole group of notifications away. So that's not notifications. Now, in addition to these great features for helping you limit distractions, we wanted to go further. 
and it's with a feature we call screen time. Screen time empowers you with both insight and control over how you spend your time. And it starts with reports. Every week, you get a weekly activity summary that details how you used your iPhone or iPad. You tap in and you get to view your full activity report. It's really detailed. You get deep insight on how much time you're spending, where you're spending it, and even how your use breaks down during the day uh, or the night. You get a summary of the time you're spending in apps, how much time you're spending, how often per hour you're picking up your phone and what's drawing you in, and what apps are sending you the most notifications. Now, equipped with this insight, you can make decisions about how much time you want to spend with your device each day. But we know there are people who would like a little extra help in managing their use of apps. And for them, we've created App Limits. So if in your activity report, you see an app where you might want to be spending a little bit less time, well, you can set your own limit. And then during the day, when you're using the app, you'll receive a helpful notification letting you know time is almost up. Once you've reached, reached your limit, instead of the app, you'll see this. It's time to move on. Now, we'll let you grant yourself an extension if you want, but we'll give you a reminder later to move along. Now, this is also in sync across your iPhone and iPad, so your limits apply to your total usage. We think this is going to be helpful for many people, but especially for some kids. And we know this is something that can help families achieve the right balance for them. And of course, it starts with providing your kids with great information so they get an activity report of their own. But as a parent, you get one as well on your device. And based on what you see, you have the option of creating allowances. And Now, you have many options. One of them is downtime, time when you want your kids to unplug altogether, for instance, at bedtime. And you can also limit uh, your kids' time in apps by category or by individual app. Now, there's some apps you may want to always allow them to use. For instance, you may want them to be able to get at the phone at all, the t all times so they can contact you. Or you may want to give them access to educational apps. Labs. And you can also limit access to only movies, apps, and websites that you deem age appropriate. Now, this works, of course, across their iPhone and iPad, and it's this is family sharing, so it's super easy to set up, and you can manage it all remotely from your parent parental device. And so that are some, are some great screen time and some great features to help you better manage your time. Now, next I'd like to talk about one of the most important uses of our devices, and that's communication. And we'll start with messages. Messages has given us fun ways to express ourselves with emoji and now animoji. And one of the things that make animoji so fun is how expressive they are, you know, from smiles to frowns to nods of the head and blinking of the eye. Animoji do such an amazing job tracking our expressions. And this year, we're taking animoji to a whole new level, the breakthrough new technology we call tongue detection. That's right. Now you can make your favorite animoji do this. 
we're all going to be sticking out our tongues to our phones in the near future. Now, we've also, we're also introducing some great new Animoji that I think you're all going to love, like Ghost, Koala, Tiger, and T-Rex. But we wanted to take Animoji even further by making them even more personal. So I'm thrilled today to announce the arrival of the era of Memoji. With, that's right, with Memoji, you can create your very own personalized Animoji. Now, these Animoji can look like you or the real you. And We've worked hard to build a deep set of customization options to let our customers create an incredibly diverse set of Memoji. It's really incredible what you can create. And we've designed a beautiful new experience to create these Memoji that makes the process fun and easy. Now, to tell you more about it, I'd like to invite one of the managers of our messages and Animoji features Kelsey Peterson, to give you a live demo. Kelsey. Good morning. I cannot wait to tell you what's new with messages. Let's get started with Animoji. First, you need to meet the newest members of the team. We've got a new cat in town, our tiger. She's so cute. And now, my personal favorite, the koala. Oops, just getting excited, scrolling through here. They can't all be cute and cuddly though, so here's our T-Rex. And we have our very own friendly little ghost. So much fun. And if I swipe right, here's where I can create my very own Memoji. Let me show you just how easy it is. I recently chopped my hair, so I want one that matches the new me. So I've selected a skin color, and now I'm trying to figure out just the right amount of freckles. So real Goldilocks scenario. Yeah, these are just right. Okay, on to the main event. There are so many hairstyles to choose from. First, I'm gonna grab my color. And then, like I said, I need to go a little bit shorter. All right. Mm, nope, this is the one. Now that I'm all set, I can of course select my eye color. And what's really amazing is as I'm making changes, the character up above is coming to life. There are tons of options for me to customize. I could add earrings, but what I really want is a great pair of sunnies. So I'm gonna come over to eyewear and pick out some frames. Mm, maybe not for today. I think I need two lenses. These are the ones. I'm gonna take my lens to make a great pair of sunglasses. Right into a lot of and that's how simple it is. For my it bought our effort.
here on the left. Tapping on the left. So, this is a comic book. It's really fun. But for a response about a tiny dog hat, I think I'm going to go in a different artistic direction. So what I really need to do is add a sticker from one of my favorite sticker packs. Ferdy looked really excited about that new dog hat. So I'm going to put him right here. And now we have an all new way for you to use an emoji. I can apply my favorite an emoji right here live. Here's the emoji I just created, but I actually have just the one. It's of me in a very similar red hat, which is kind of perfect for twinning with my pup. So I'm going to set up my shot, snap, and send. And that's a demo of the fun new effects and messages. Back to you, Craig. So that's Memoji and some fun new effects in the camera and messages. Next, let's talk about FaceTime. Yeah. <laughs> FaceTime is the way that so many of us connect with the people in our lives and share some of our most important moments. And it's helped us deepen our connection with people important to us wherever they are. And of course, it's a fun place just to hang out. Now, this year, FaceTime is going to take a big leap forward. Because today, we're introducing group FaceTime. Now, you'll be able to FaceTime with two people, three people, actually up to 32 simultaneous participants. Setting up a group call couldn't be easier. Just instead of typing one person's name, you can do many. You can ring them by tapping audio or video. But we also introduced a great new way because FaceTime is now integrated into messages. So you can quickly go from a group chat you have going directly in to a group FaceTime. And members of the group can join in and drop out at any time. It's really great. Would you like to see it? Well, let's do a demo. Well, I think for our first live demo of group FaceTime, I'm going to uh, contact the folks back in Cupertino. Now I can just dive in to this conversation I have going with the members of the FaceTime team. And it looks like actually they're already on a group FaceTime call, so I'm just going to join right in. Hey, everybody. Hey, everybody. Hey, everybody. Hey, everybody. Now check it out. So it's this beautiful FaceTime UI. We have these big, gorgeous tiles right up front where you see some of the leaders of the FaceTime team. And down at the bottom, there's an area we call the roster that contains everybody else. And of course, I'm right there in the lower right-hand corner. Hey, Craig. Wait, am I on the big screen? <laughs> yes, Lauren, this is not a test. You're in front of 6,000 of your biggest new fans. <laughs> What you probably notice is when Lauren spoke, her tile automatically got larger to reflect her prominence in the conversation. This is totally automatic. Uh, hey, Roberto, how's it going back there in Cupertino? I'd say it's going pretty well. And uh, Lauren, sorry for stealing your spotlight. <laughs> so this works, of course, for people in the roster as well. When they speak, they come forward. Uh, hey, Christopher, you ready to make your big entrance? Finally, my moment has come. Hello, world. <laughs> now, well done. Now, you can control this too. So if I want to bring Woody front and center, I just double tap. There he is. Now, <laughs> Woody, your baby is performing admirably here. Thanks, Craig. It's exciting to finally be able to share group FaceTime with everyone. It sure is. Now, we have not only all of this, but we've also brought the fun effects to the FaceTime camera. I can just tap in and I have access to an emoji, filters, and all of my sticker packs, and everyone else on the call can apply them too. Wow, 
Now this is the future. Hey, Craig, check this out. I'm a comic book koala, something I've always wanted to be. <laughs> I'm glad you've finally been able to express that side of yourself, Roberto. Hey, Tim, is that you? Yeah, it's me. I signed up to help test FaceTime. <laughs> Well, thank you, Tim. Every little bit counts. Happy to help, and thanks to everyone on the FaceTime team for making it a reality. I can't wait to start using it every Sunday night to call the leadership team. <laughs> looking forward to that, Tim. Of course, what I'm really looking forward to is getting group FaceTime to everyone on iOS 12. Thanks, guys, for a fantastic call. We'll see you back in Cupertino. Thank you. So that's group FaceTime. It works on iPhone, iPad, and Mac, and you can even answer an audio on your wrist on your Apple Watch. So that's FaceTime and messages, and this is iOS 12. Improved performance, new AR experiences, Siri suggestions, screen time, Memoji and fun effects in the messages camera, and group FaceTime. I hope you like it. I'm going to hand it back to Tim. Thank you. Thank you, Craig. iOS 12 looks fantastic, and we can't wait for everyone to get their hands on it. Next up, we'd like to talk about the Apple Watch. When we began development of the watch many years ago, we had a vision for just how impactful and essential it could become in our lives. So we worked very hard to create something that you would love and want to wear all the time. And customers do love it. In fact, Apple Watch is number one in customer satisfaction. And not just this year, but every single year since we launched in 2015. And growth has been off the charts. Apple Watch grew 60% last year. We're constantly hearing from customers about the many ways that the Apple Watch has changed their lives. And I'd like to share just one of them with you this morning. Mary Dobgen was boating with her husband, John, when due to a medical condition, all of John's muscles went completely limp and he fell into the ice cold water. With her arms wrapped around John to keep him from drowning, Mary could not reach her phone to call for help. But with her Apple Watch, she was able to call Siri, or to, to use Siri to call 911. Rescuers soon arrived and saved John's life. As, as Mary told us, if it wasn't for my Apple Watch, he really would not be here today. This is just one of the many stories that we've heard about, about how Apple Watch is impacting people's lives. They range from getting people to be more active to helping users uh, live a healthier life, or even to alerting users to an elevated heart rate. Apple Watch brings such amazing capabilities right to the wrist, and of course, So at the heart of this is watchOS. We're excited to introduce watchOS 5 today, which brings even more ways for you to stay active and connected. And I'd like to hand it off to Kevin Lynch to tell you all about it. Kevin? Good morning. You know, stories like that about how Apple Watch is supporting people around the world in even extreme situations like Mary and John's, but also in their daily lives is really super motivating to us as a team. 
And there are things you do every day that shape your life. An Apple Watch has two areas it's working to help you support those activities every day. First, staying active to increase your well-being and health. And second, being connected to the people and the information that you care most about. We're moving WatchOS forward in both of these areas. Let's start with health and fitness. Now, much of the power in the health and fitness features that we put in Watch are really empowered by the investment we do to make sure the data you see is accurate. The data from our custom-built heart rate sensor, accelerometer, gyro, GPS are all thoroughly validated. In fact, from our fitness lab, we've studied over six terabytes of data, where 12 12,000 study participants logged over 90,000 hours of sessions. They actually burned 2.3 million calories doing this. We believe this is the largest biometric data collection of its kind. And we take this information and we work, work to integrate this seamlessly with the user experience. So when you raise your wrist and you look at your activity rings, the information is not only accurate, but it's also meaningful to you. And we really love hearing about your focus on closing these rings. And we really enable this through a number of ways in Apple Watch. First, of course, we do daily coaching so you can see what your goals are for the day. We also support celebrations when you achieve your goals. And we have special edition challenges, like the most recent Earth Day challenge that we did. And on a monthly basis, we, we do monthly goals that are personalized to you. And of course, the activity app also supports activity sharing, which has become one of the most popular features of the activity app. Many of you love the excitement of good old-fashioned competition, though. So in WatchOS 5, you can challenge any of your activity sharing friends to a seven-day competition whenever you would like. And if they accept, you each try to win the week by closing your rings and earning points. You earn one point for each percent of a ring that you close. And while you're in the middle of a competition, your progress notifications are updated to not only show you the progress your friend's making, but also where you stand in the competition. And when you win, you receive a new award. We're really excited about this edition, and if you're competitive, it gives you a whole new way to enjoy the activity app. Now, when you're doing... Now, when you do want to go do a workout, there's a lot of workout types you can choose from. And they all have custom algorithms to measure things like calorie burn, pace, distance, elevation gain. And when you're swimming, it even counts laps and detects what swim strokes you're using. And with Gym Kit, your metrics are in sync with your favorite gym equipment. And we're really excited to bring more enhancements to workouts in WatchOS 5, starting with a new workout type for yoga. Now, this works primarily from your heart rate. And we calibrate this to your fitness level through the rest of your day. So now you can more accurately track those yoga sessions, including those intense vinyasa sessions. Now, we've also also added a new workout type for hiking. This takes into account pace and heart rate and elevation gain, so you can more accurately get exercise credit while you're hiking in steep terrain or really long stages. <laughs> and Apple Watch has become a really great running companion, especially now that we've added GPS and cellular and music streaming. We're making this an even better experience now for training runs and races. In addition to current and average pace, you now have the option to keep track of your rolling mile pace, which is how fast you ran the immediately preceding mile. You can also now set a custom pace alert, so your Apple Watch will tap you when you're above or below the pace that you've set. And finally, runners will now get cadence, so you can see your current steps per minute. We're really excited for runners to try these out. Now, Now, there's sometimes when you forget to start a workout on watch, but you've started working out. And to solve this now, we're adding automatic workout detection. Yeah. 
So your Apple Watch will now offer to start tracking a workout if it senses that you're beginning one. And even if you press start sometime after you began working out, you'll get retroactive credit for the workouts that you did. And these start alerts will support all these great workouts on Apple Watch. Now when you reduce the intensity of your movement or your heart rate decreases, but you forget to end your workout, of course Watch will also detect that and suggest that you stop. So, all these new features, activity competitions, the new yoga and hiking workout, new features for runners and automatic workout detection are all enabling you to more accurately track your workouts and stay motivated while you do. Now let's talk about being connected. Apple Watch enables you to remain in the moment while also easily connected to the people and information that you care about. And the introduction of cellular made this even better. You can stay connected even when you're going out for an evening, running some errands, or even going for a swim. Or stay in touch when your phone might not be easily available to you. And staying connected with people you love is something that our customers love about Apple Watch. You can easily make or receive a phone call, and you can hear the emotion and tone on the other end of the voice as you talk in, in real time. Or you can use messages to have impromptu, short conversations with loved ones in a message thread. In watchOS 5, you'll have an entirely new way to communicate on your watch. That's real-time voice, but with the spontaneity of short messaging. Did you steal my tips? Maybe. I cannot wait till you go to college. <laughs> Introducing walkie-talkie. This is a new app on Apple Watch. Upcoming episodes from subscribe podcasts will be automatically synced to your watch, so you can get them right there. Or you can just ask Siri to stream a podcast for you and it'll start playing. And playback resumes across all your devices so you can continue just where you left off. So that's podcasts. Now, those are the great new features coming in WatchOS. five to stay connected with people and information that you care most about interactive notifications web content new content and shortcuts in the Siri face podcast and of course walkie-talkie now we'd like to show you this stuff live in action and we thought we'd increase the challenge a bit in our live demo here today to keep it interesting. So Jules, who helps lead our fitness experiences, is actually going to do the demo while biking. <laughs> so Jules has expertise in coaching and she knows how to move and demonstrate and motivate all at the same time. Take it away, Jules. Thank you, Ben. I've got some great stuff to show you that I think you're really going to love. And uh, bonus is I get to work on clothes I do it. So first, I'm super excited to show you how easy it is to start a workout with gym kit. I just tap to connect. And accept on the watch. And now I can control and start the workout right here from the console on the bike. All of my data between the watch and the bike is in sync and all of my workout metrics are accurate. Now, I wouldn't typically be trying to demo things for you and sneak in a workout at the same time, but I wanna show you activity competitions. And to do that, I need to keep moving. This morning, I got this notification and it says, your competition with Jay is down to the last day and it's a close one. Have you got what it takes to win? Have I got what it takes? You bet I do. But if I 
scroll down, I can see that Jay has moved ahead of me by a couple of points, and that's not okay because this thing ends tonight. So I think I'm going to add a little resistance to this workout here and work to earn as many points as possible and move ahead of Jay by the time this demo is done. I can simply tap here and send him a little smack talk to let him know I'm coming for him. Let me show you interactive notifications because I have dinner reservations tonight that I made through Yelp. If all goes well here, I'm going to go out with my girlfriends from work to celebrate. And because we all know that Jay's going to lose this competition, maybe I should invite him along so it can be his treat. Now I can simply add to the number of guests and confirm right here in the app without ever having to open open it. It's that simple. Now in watchOS 5, notifications from apps are smartly grouped together. And here are a couple messages from my friend Catherine. We're trying to get to a yoga retreat this summer. And it looks like she sent me a link. Now I can tap it here and see if she's found somewhere great for us to go. Oh yeah, this looks beautiful. I'm already in, but I could continue to scroll through the site, maybe read a little bit more about the retreat, even check the dates to make sure that they work. And I can do all that right here from my wrist. Let me show you the enhancements that we've made to the new Siri watch face. At the top here, you see the workout that I'm in right now. And when I'm ready to get back to it, I can just tap. Next up is Glow Baby, because it's about this time each day that I check the app to see if my husband has logged our one-year-old's nap. Oh, good job, baby. He slept two hours. And you parents know that good naps equal good nights, so I'm looking forward to that. All right. As I scroll through my day, I can see my next meeting. I can see traffic and directions to places that I'm going later today. Here's that dinner that Siri found in my calendar. And waiting for me at the end of my day is a shortcut to my evening meditation. Meditation or 10% happier. Nice. Now, I want to check back in on this competition, but I thought it might be a good idea to get a little moral support from my number one fan. And you heard Kevin say how walkie-talkie is so great for staying in touch with close friends and family. family. So I set my daughter up with walkie-talkie so that she can help demo what it's like to receive one and maybe give me, give me a little bit of love up here. Oh, there she is. Mommy, I see you on TV. Isn't that fun? How am I doing? So good. I know you'll beat Uncle Jay. Hashtag mommy for the win. <laughs> Thanks, Peach. I love you. <laughs> and that's how walkie talkie works. All right. The time is now to check in on this competition and see if I have done enough to pull ahead. I'm going to tap into activity and swipe over to see the score. Oh, yes. <laughs> Sorry, Jay, but the day is still young. Thanks, everybody, and back to you, Kevin. Way to go, Jules. So in watchOS 5, we've enabled even deeper integration on the watch for apps, enabling them to work right in the moment. And apps can include interactive controls within notifications, so you can quickly 
quickly do more without even opening an app, like extend your parking with pay by phone. And with short cuts, there's also new opportunities for third party apps to appear on Apple Watch right on the watch face. You can tap on a shortcut in the Siri face to order coffee, rent a bike, or pick up where you left off in a in a workout. You can even use your custom Siri commands that you created on your phone to speak on your watch. And for native apps building rich experiences, we've improved the workout API for greater performance, and we've added the ability for third-party apps to play background audio. This enables you to easily sync things, of course, like audiobooks, favorite playlists, guided meditations, right to your watch, and they'll be able to play continuously in the background. Now there's so many other features coming in watchOS, including things like the ability to customize the button arrangement in your control center, or you can add an air quality complication to your watch face. But one really exciting one is student ID cards. You're gonna have the ability to add your student ID card to wallet on your iPhone and Apple Watch. And you can, this works by simply holding your watch near a reader anywhere you can use your student ID cards on and off campus you can get access to places like your dorm or the library or events on campus. You can even pay for things like snacks or laundry or dinners. And this works with your watch or your phone and it will be available this fall starting with these universities and will expand to more campuses over time. Now this is also Pride Month. And we're really excited to introduce an all-new Pride Edition watch band. And we didn't stop there. We made a beautiful new face that matches perfectly with the band. And the band. I think you're going to love them. Thanks, Tim. Apple TV is built on an incredible platform, TVOS. And TVOS is built specifically for the living room to make it easy to enjoy your favorite TV shows, movies, apps, and games. Now, as Tim mentioned, last September, we introduced Apple K with the goal of bringing the quality cinematic experience right to your home. And high dynamic range, including support for HDR tech and Dolby Vision. Time said the new Apple TV is a high fidelity powerhouse. And to ensure you can enjoy this beautiful experience with as much content as possible, iTunes offers the largest collection of 4K HDR movies. And we've upgraded your previously purchased movies to 4K HDR for free on all available titles. There are also, thank you, there are also many 4K and HDR TV shows available Available from popular services like Amazon Prime Video and Netflix. And we know what makes for an amazing cinematic experience is not just great picture quality, it's also incredible sound. So Apple TV 4K is bringing you the latest in audio technology. Dolby Atmos. with app 
Atmos, you get room filling sound, the perfect complement to the stunning visuals of Apple TV 4K. Now, what makes Atmos so special is that unlike a traditional surround sound setup where sound is assigned to channels like the left or the right, Dolby Atmos has the ability to completely immerse you. Atmos moves sound in three-dimensional space, creating an experience with powerful audio that flows all around you. It puts you right in the center of the action. All this with a home theater setup as simple as a Dolby Atmos enabled soundbar and an Apple TV 4K. In fact, Apple TV 4K is the only streaming player to be both Dolby Vision and Dolby Atmos certified. And this fall, iTunes will be bringing you the largest collection of Atmos content anywhere. And just like with 4K HDR, your iTunes libraries will be upgraded to include Dolby Atmos on all supported titles for free. Now, of course, these movies and so much more are available in the Apple TV app. The Apple TV app is the center of your video experience. A single place place to find and watch what you love across your favorite apps. It's on Apple TV, iPad, and iPhone, where you can find not only on-demand TV shows and movies, but also live content, including sports. The Apple TV app now offers a huge range of live sports. And we've added live news to make it even easier to stay current. The addition of live sports and news providers brings the coverage of the TV app to over 100 video channels, giving you a massive selection of content all in one place. With all this, Apple TV is the best box to connect to your TV. And that's now more true than ever, as more and more cable companies fundamentally shift how video gets to your TV. subscribed canal services and their subscribers can now choose Apple TV to access more than a hundred and some of the biggest sports including the French Open in 4k in Switzerland we've partnered with salt salt just launched a new TV service with more than 300 live TV channels and it's available exclusively on Apple TV. And I'm really excited to announce that here in the US, this is the Northern California coast heading southward. You can see Lake Tahoe surrounded by snow caps and the San Francisco Bay. These are truly incredible and offer such a unique perspective on the world. I'd like to give a huge thanks to the International Space Station, National Lab, and CASIS for all their help in making this a possibility. These are going to look incredible at home in 4K HDR. So that's tvOS. Apple TV gives you amazing picture and sound with 4K, HDR, and now Dolby Atmos. And the Apple TV app is the center of your video experience. Available on Apple TV, iPad, and iPhone, it's the one place to find all your favorite TV shows, movies, sports, and news. And with that, I'll hand it back to Tim. Thank you. Thanks, Jen. Apple TV 4K and tvOS look and sound awesome. You're really going to love it. Next up is the Mac. At Apple, yeah, we love the Mac. 
The Mac was the first computer that made powerful technology so easy to use and put the customer at the center of the experience. And of course, that remains at the core of all Apple products. For more than 30 years, the Mac has empowered people to create all kinds of amazing things, from the personal to the professional. Today, we're excited to take Mac a is chock full of new features inspired by pro users, but designed for everyone. I'd like to bring Craig back up to talk about it. Craig? Hello again. Matt, it's true that Mac OS is the heart of what makes a Mac a Mac. And we want as many Mac users as possible to have access to our latest software. And that's why six years ago, with the introduction of OS X Mavericks, we began offering our Mac OS updates free for Mac users. And 2013 was also the year that we first introduced our California naming theme. Now, after spending a year by the ocean, we not only modernized the look and feel of Mac OS, but we headed to the mountains with Mac OS Yosemite. Now, as you may be aware, our naming of Mac releases is handled by our crack marketing organization. And as you probably noticed, they went on a four-year mountain-bound bender. <laughs> In El Capitan, we added metal, our groundbreaking graphics technology. In Sierra, we brought Siri to the Mac and extended our capabilities and continuity. And last year, with High Sierra, we focused on deep technology, preparing the Mac for future innovation. Well, this year, we've made some striking changes to Mac OS, and we've left the high country for a place entirely different but no less beautiful in here still in California, and I'd like to take you there now. Our next release of Mac OS is Mac OS Mojave. Mojave is beautiful during the day, but what really captured our, our imagination was the beauty of the desert at night. And this inspired one of our most distinctive new features, and I'd like to show it to you now. So here we are, live in Mac OS Mojave. And I'd like to show you a new side of Mojave. We call it dark mode. It's not just about the dock or the menu bar. It extends to your Windows Chrome bar and even the content of the windows. And it's so great for pros. It makes photographic content absolutely pop off the screen. It's just gorgeous. So nice. And this is great not just for photography. but when working on presentations or documents. It's also great doing ordinary things if maybe you're working in a dark environment. You just look at calendar.
and even male in dark mode. It's so great. And I think some of us are going to want to run dark mode just because it's so cool. I mean, your emoji look great. Your photos look great. I mean, check out your album art and music or your For You feed and Apple music. But I think one audience that's going to especially appreciate dark mode are some of you here in this room are developers. source code, or even interface builder, and all of its inspectors, they just look fantastic in black. And that's a quick look at dark mode. Now, we were, we were so inspired by this changing desktop wallpaper, we decided to add a new feature to Mojave that I think you'll, you'll enjoy. dynamic desktop. And when you're using, using it, your desktop actually subtly changes throughout the day from morning to afternoon to evening. It's really cool. Now, there's much more to Mojave that I'd like to share with you. through demos, and it starts with the desktop. Now, the desktop is so crucial to how many of us use our Macs. When we have files that we're actively working on, we often put them on the desktop, but the result can be a desktop that looks something like this. And so now in Mojave, we have a really great solution, and we call it desktop Stacks. All of the contents of your desktop are automatically arranged into these stacks. And they can be arranged by kind, by date, or even by tag. And they're really easy to use. You just click on them, you can see all the contents in the stack, you can double click to open a document and put it away. And they stay organized. So for instance, if I bring forward mail, maybe I drag an image out, I want you to watch what happens. Because the image flies right into the right stack. Now, you can also scrub your stacks. So for instance, I'll just scrub across this stack. You see I can select between different photos, pick one up. Actually, let me just hide mail here, mid-drag. Got a little excited with my, uh, with all of my stack action. So I can just drag, drag this out and drop it in just like, like that. And that's a quick look at stacks. Now, we've also brought some great new changes to the Finder. I'd like to show them to you now. Now, it starts the new view. We all uh, enjoy using using icon view, list view, there's of course column view, but now we've added an all new view called gallery view. It has a big preview up top, a set of thumbnails along the bottom, and it makes it easy to preview images, video, presentations, documents, spreadsheets, PDFs, and of course with images, Sometimes you want to know more detail about, for instance, how they were captured. And now the new sidebar in Mojave really helps because it now supports full. So you can 
can see around your photo the camera you took the aperture settings and so forth. It's really handy. And you'll notice also along the bottom, there's this new area called quick actions. And quick actions let you act on the current photo. So for instance, if I have a photo like this and I want to edit it, I don't have to open it and go or do a new app. I can rotate it right here inside the finder. It's really powerful. Now, this sidebar is available in other views of the Finder. So for instance, I'm just going to bring up the preview pane here, and I'm going to do a multi-selection of a PDF as well as several images. And you'll notice that the Quick Actions area is contextual. So it shows me Create PDF as an option. I'm going to click Create PDF, and it's going to assemble all of these photos into a PDF just like that. But what's really great is these actions are also customizable. So you can create automator actions and assign them to buttons here inside of Finder. So you'll notice that now that I have this PDF selected, I have an option to run a custom automator action that I've created called Watermark PDF. When I click it, my custom action runs and my document is watermarked just like that. And those are some quick enhancements to the finder. Now, a tool that I think many of us love when working with files is Quick Look. And now in Mojave, we've made Quick Look more powerful than ever, ever by integrating markup. Let me show you how it works. So you see down here, I have a permission slip in a, it's a PDF document. I'm just gonna hit tap space bar to Quick Look it. And you notice now I have the option to invoke markup. I click and now I have access to my markup tools, including my ability to sign this document. I can just drag out my signature like this and I'm done. Now, this works for all kinds of files. So for instance, with images, I can rotate and crop. And with video, I can even trim right here inside of Quick Look. That's a quick look at Quick Look. <laughs> Next, I want to talk about how we capture content on our Mac, because one of the tools I think many of us use all the time is screenshots. And we've made screenshots. shots more powerful than ever in Mojave. So let's take a look here uh, at a web page, and I'm just going to take a screenshot in the traditional way. I'm going to screenshot a selection of the page, and I want you to watch what happens in the lower right. I get a thumbnail instantly of that screenshot, and when I double click in, I get an exception accelerated workflow right into markup where I have access to all of my tools. So for instance, if I want to create the magnification here, I can just drag that out, magnify, it's that easy. But now we've also made it easier to access a variety of tools. tools. So when I bring up my screenshotting, you see I have presented with this HUD that tells me I could capture the entire screen, a selected window or selection, but we've also added screen capture for video right into screenshotting. Let me show you how that works. So I'm going to go to a web page here that has an animation running. I'm going to bring up my screenshotting tools and say to record the selected area. I'll just make a nice selection here. Here. Okay, and I'm recording just like that. Of course, I can manipulate the app. This will all be reflected in my recording. And when I'm done, I can click, click the stop button right up here. 
And now you notice I have this thumbnail in the lower right. Well, I can actually pick this up and drag it into a new space and incorporate it right into a document, just like that. Now, we further enhance the way you capture content, and that brings me to continuity. So Mac users love continuity for the way it lets us work across our devices with things like uh, AirDrop or the ability to unlock your Mac using your Apple Watch. When it comes to capturing content, we all walk around with one of the best content capture devices in the world in our pockets, our phones. And so we wanted to take advantage of continuity to bring that to the Mac with a feature we call Continuity Camera. Let me show you how it works. So here in my keynote presentation, I have a space that's just waiting for a new photo. And I have my phone right here. Well, when I select this object, I can choose to take a photo. And I want, want you to watch what happens when I select this to my phone. It automatically, immediately lights up, ready to take a photo. So I can take one like this. And when I do, I can select use photo and it appears directly in my document. Isn't that cool? Now, this works as well for scanning documents. So here I have a place where I could use a scan. Once again, I'm gonna select uh, from the menu and this time scan document. Again, my camera lights up, this time right in my document scanner. I just scan like this, I can save it, and my scan goes immediately in, I think I forgot to push the save button. Sorry about that, everybody. There you go, appears immediately in my document. Thank you. And so just like that, I can take photos, stills, and even capture video. And this is a quick look at some great new features in Mojave. Next, I'd like to turn to apps. We are bringing news to the Mac. has all of the stories you've come to expect from news on iOS, and they look amazing on the Mac display. You get top stories picked by our editors, trending stories, you're personalized for you, and that's not for me, and <laughs> you also get this great new sidebar where you can drill Drill in and jump right to the topics and channels you follow. News is going to be great. We also have stocks coming to the Mac. Now, you get your stock prices combined with high quality business news. It's delivered from Apple News. It shows you your watch list with your prices on the left. You can even drill into this interactive chart to get more information. We're presenting web pages with only a simplified system configuration. We show them only built in fonts. And legacy plugins are no longer supported, so those can't contribute to a fingerprint. And as a result, your Mac will look more like everyone else's Mac, and it will be dramatically more difficult for data companies to uniquely identify your device and track you. new protections to Safari on both Mojave and iOS 12. Next, let's talk about the Mac App Store. And to do that, I'd like to invite to the stage Ann Tai, our product, product marketing manager for the App Store. Ann. <laughs> 
Last year, we launched a completely redesigned App Store on iOS. Every day, we celebrate apps, games, and developers. We've written more than 4,000 stories for the new Today tab, and hundreds of them have each been read by more than a million people. The response has been incredible, and we've learned a lot. We've got a bunch of great new features coming later this year that we'll cover in sessions. This year, we are turning our attention to the Mac App Store. Since it launched in 2011, it's changed the way we download and install software for Mac, making it easy with one click. It's the big biggest catalog of Mac apps in the world. It's also a trusted and safe place to download software, and trusting where you get your apps from has become more important than ever. Developers can distribute their apps to 155 countries and get worldwide payment processing, and it offers seamless software updates from one place. This adds up to a great experience for our users. We've spent a lot of time thinking about what people do on their Macs and wanted to create a place organized around those themes. So we've redesigned an all new Mac app store from the ground up and we're thrilled to show it to you now. beautiful UI that should feel familiar, but new, and designed first and foremost to be a great Mac app. Starting with the new Discover tab, where each week you can find in-depth editorial about the best Mac apps through stories and collections, and see what's most popular with top charts. Here's a story about musician and founder Kareem Morsi. Learn about how he uses Is his app, DJ Pro 2, and get inspiration for your own set. Helpful videos autoplay, so you can see what apps are capable of before downloading them. Visit the all new Create, Work, Play, and Develop tabs where you'll find helpful recommendations and expertise around each theme. Here's the Create tab where you can find apps that bring your artistic ideas to life. These tabs will also help you make the most of apps you might already have with tips and tutorials most expert users will find useful. The work, play, and develop tabs share the same beautiful design, and you can still browse by category on the Categories tab. We've redesigned product pages too, bringing many features over from iOS based on our learnings there. It has more useful information, like video previews, available on the Mac App Store for the first time, and apps rank if it's charting and if it's been named Editor's Choice. Ratings and reviews are now front and center. And these are so important for app discovery. So we're introducing a ratings and review API for Mac apps. Now it'll be easier than ever for people to leave feedback. We're really excited about the all new Mac App Store. We've talked to some developers already, and they're really excited too. Like Microsoft, who will bring Office 365 to the Mac App Store later this year. <laughs> and Adobe is bringing Lightroom CC. Panic is bringing Transmit. And Barebones is bringing BB Edit. And many more great names are coming to the all-new Mac App Store, too. 
We can't wait for you to check out the new Mac App Store. Now, I'll hand it back to Craig. So we think the Mac App Store is going to inspire whole new generations of apps. And so we want to talk about some of the technologies that will be behind some of that next generation. We spoke earlier about ARKit. I want to talk about two more. And let's start with Metal. Now, Metal is the technology to get the highest performance graphics and computation from graphics processors. Metal was designed for modern GPUs. It's incredibly efficient. And that enables amazing console level games like Fortnite from Epic to run great for the first time on mobile. But Metal also enables these games to scale to take full advantage of modern Macs. In fact, across iOS and the Mac, there are over one billion Metal-enabled devices. And we're constantly making Metal better. To bring the highest GPU performance and reach of all Macs, we've recently added support for external GPUs. And this is powered by Metal. And the results are truly mind-boggling. For instance, running a filter in DaVinci Resolve, look at how it scales on the incredibly fast iMac Pro as you add up to four eGPUs. Now, the results are even more staggering when you take a 13-inch MacBook Pro and add eGPUs to it, achieving up to 8.5 times. Pretty awesome. Now, eGPUs also enable Macs to achieve all new levels of performance and realism in 3D rendering and gaming. Now, this beautiful forest you see here, this isn't a video capture. This is from Unity's new Book of the Dead interactive demo, and it's being rendered live right now on a MacBook with an eGPU powering this display. I mean, doesn't this look amazing? <laughs> now, of course, because this is rendered live, uh, we can check what's up ahead. So let's start walking. Now, Unity is using Metal's unified graphics and compute to generate real-time lighting and complex post-processing effects. So cool. And that's all rendered live on a MacBook running with an eGPU. It's pretty great. Now, another place where we're doing incredible acceleration with metal is in machine learning. And today, ML specialists usually use one of these third-party libraries to train their models using servers. And now it turns out we can accelerate tools like this with our new metal performance shaders. We're seeing speed ups of up to 20 times in using the GPU with metal instead of CPU-based training. And while speeding these tools up is great, we actually think there's a better way for most developers. And that's training on the Mac you already have using a great new tool we call CreateML. CreateML is designed to let you train without being a machine learning expert. You can train your own custom data, and it's really easy to use because it's all built in Swift. And in fact, you can use Xcode Playgrounds to train your model. Just drag one in your training set, and you can drag in your test set as well. And the training is all GPU accelerated, so it's incredibly fast. Now, 
As an example, we worked with Memrise. They're a developer who uses the uh, camera to identify objects and speak them in multiple languages. And in the past, they would train their model with 20,000 images, and it would take them 24 hours to do so. Well, now, with CreateML, they can train that same model in 48 minutes on a MacBook Pro. And on an iMac Pro, it's just 18 minutes. And what's even more incredible is that model in the past for them was 90 megabytes, and now it's just three megabytes. It's a huge difference. Now, we also are making models run much faster on device using Core ML2. Now, Core ML is our technology for high performance on device machine learning, and now it's better than ever. It's 30% faster in on-device processing using a technique called batch predictions. And you can reduce your model size by up to 75% using quantization. And so that's Core ML and Create ML. You no longer have to be an expert in machine learning to build those techniques into your app. Now, these technologies are redefining what's possible in apps. And they're common not just to Mac OS, but also to iOS. And the fact that the Mac and iOS share so much technology has led people almost every year to keep asking us the question, are you merging iOS and Mac OS? So I'd like to take a moment to briefly address this question. No. <laughs> of course not. We, we love the Mac, because it's and we love Mac OS, because it's explicitly created to, to the unique characteristics of hardware, like the ergonomics of the keyboard and the track plays and storage. And because of the power it exposes, it makes the Mac able to accomplish almost anything. So we think that this question is actually coming from something else. You know, Mac users have access to a rich set of great native applications, apps that take full advantage of the power of Mac technologies. But Mac users also use apps based on other technologies. We routinely access web-based experiences like Netflix that build on WebKit, the standards-based web technology in Safari. And we also run sometimes cross-platform games uh, built on technology like Metal. And all of these platforms enrich the Mac user's experience. Uh, but we think there's room for one more. And so we'd like to give you a sneak peek of a multi-year project we have going on because we see a huge opportunity for the Mac to tap into the world's most vital app ecosystem. It's called iOS. iOS. I think you might be familiar with it. Now, there are millions of iOS apps out there, and we think some of them would be absolutely great on the Mac, and Mac users would love to have them there. And from a technical standpoint, it's actually a really good fit because from day one, iOS and Mac OS have shared common foundations. But iOS devices and Mac OS devices have of course are different and the user interfaces are somewhat different and so the frameworks underneath are as well. And that makes today porting an app from one to the other some work. Well, we wanted to make this much easier. And so we've taken some key frameworks from iOS and brought them to the Mac. And we've adapted them to specific Mac behaviors like use of trackpad pad and mouse, window resizing, integration of things like copy and paste and drag and drop into the system services on the Mac. 
Now, phase one of this effort is to test it on ourselves. So this year in macOS, we've taken some of our own iOS apps and we brought them to the Mac using this technology to make sure it works well. You've actually heard about several of them earlier today. And it turns out they make fantastic Mac apps. And we were able to bring them to the app with the Mac with very few code changes. Now, this is going to be coming to you developers next year. So you can easily bring your iOS apps to the Mac. And in the meantime, we hope you enjoy news, stocks, voice memos, and home in Mojave. Now, we're really excited about Mojave from desktop stacks to finder with gallery view to, to enhance screenshots and markup news and home on the mac for the first time stocks and of course the redesigned mac app store and of course there's even more like apfs now supports fusion and hard drives and safari tabs can now have favicons if you want them there And, of course, group FaceTime. So that's Mac OS Mojave. I hope you like it. I'm going to hand it back to Tim. Thank you so much. Thanks, Craig. Thank you, Craig. What a huge update to Mac OS. And what an extraordinary morning. We got started with iOS 12 with all new capabilities, including taking AR further than ever before, bringing Siri to any app with Siri shortcuts and screen time, and cool new communication features like Memoji and group FaceTime, and WatchOS, now with Walkie Talkie, activity competitions, new workouts, new Siri capabilities, and so much more. And Apple TV 4K, now with Dolby Atmos, some great new partnerships, and the ease of zero sign-on. And you're going to really love those new aerial screensavers. And Mac OS Mojave, with all new dark mode, great updates to desktop and fine security, and a completely redesigned Mac App Store. The updates will be available to our users this fall, and there will be de developer betas for each of them after the keynote this morning. Thank you. Now, before we close, we wanted to celebrate you and the amazing work that you do. So we went out and talked to some of the most important people in your lives, the ones that know you the best, and we made a short video. And I'd love to run it for you now. I don't have any idea at all how to create an app. I don't un understand any of it. Ask me another question. My son is a developer at Robinhood. My daughter Jyoti is a WWDC. My brother Stark. One drop. Sweater critters. Homer. Homer. You gotta look at her. My brother Derek created the app, Refugees and Immigrants, the Creative. The Collective. Why did I say the Creative? At Christmas time, when most kids maybe would want skis or something, he wanted computer books. He stayed in his bedroom making games while the other kids were outside playing. And when she's really doing the coding, almost always we have to tell my daughter to stop. But then my daughter would be like, just give me another 10 minutes. You know, I want to get this solved first. When I watch him code, his eyes 
move in a weird way and he's he's like totally focused I mean, even when my friends are over i'd say well, look at christopher look at him and they'd go wow when he first came to us with the idea we were like okay good luck <laughs> He started off in his small little one-bedroom apartment with next to nothing and sacrifice eating a burger and just have ramen just so that he could. And I, I'm like, just buy the burger. And he's like, no, that's three bucks that I could put towards the app. Jeremy went out to build the first version of Yelp, and it was a total bust, total failure. She tried really hard on a couple different titles, and you've never heard of them. And, you know, that's, that's a really rough feeling. That was definitely a low point for Jeremy, as it was like, hey, we got to retool and try again. What Jeremy did notice in the data was that people loved writing comments. And that was really the genesis of the second version of Yelp, which worked. You have to be re really okay with waking up to failure. And then at the end of a whole bunch of failures is something that's great.